Hey everyone, I am back with another list video and not just any list video. This is the ultimate best books of 2019 list. Uh, this was compiled by Emily Temple over at Lit Hub because uh, she does this great thing every year. I mean, you know how I love lists and, and I, I'll frequently like go through newspapers and literary journals and websites looking for their best books of the year lists and she um, compiles all of these lists from all of these different sources like The Guardian and The New York Times Book Review and KCRW and Oprah Magazine and uh, Time which I already made a video talking about their 100 best books of the year list already and uh, and so uh, it's like about two dozen sources that she scours uh, com looking at all of their best books and then she compiles them into a list and makes categories of which books have appeared the most times on these lists. So we can see uh, which books have really been standing out over the past year from a number of different uh, critics and and uh, readers and, and sources online. Uh, so it makes a really interesting uh, overview of the year as a whole. And, and it's really interesting looking down this because, I mean, some of the books are, are quite obvious. They're ones that everybody has been talking about or have won major awards this year. And then some other ones are a bit more surprising. So I'm going to break the list down and, and go through it. And I'm going to start at the very top. Uh, which, is, which are two books that have appeared on 21 lists. And they're actually two books that I don't think have won any awards this year, or at least not any that I'm aware of. So let me know in the comments if they have won. Um, the first one is Ocean Vaughn's uh, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. And I have the UK cover, uh, so uh, which I think is more beautiful than the, the US cover. Um, but that's, that's just my opinion. And I had started reading this, but I still haven't finished reading it yet. Um, I read his... Uh, poetry collection which I absolutely loved and and I was really enjoying this there was no reason I sort of put it off I just got distracted and didn't go back to it and people have really been encouraging me to go back and finish it which I, I know I will do because uh, yeah I, I was really enjoying it just beautifully poetic language and uh, really emotional connection uh, about a boy writing a letter to his mother and uh, yeah so I'm um, really enjoying this and then the other one is Colson Whitehead the Nickel Boys, and I love this this book. Um, and I, I talked about recently about how much I loved the Underground Railroad, um, but I also loved reading this new novel that he published this year. And I'm surprised it hasn't had more award recognition. But yeah, such an impactful story about wrongful incarceration and the abuse of of young offenders um, in. Uh, American prison system. So it is great to see both these books having got so much critical praise from a number of different sources. And then uh, next, uh, there are another two books um, which have appeared on 20 lists. And the first is Fleshman is in Trouble, uh, which is a book I keep seeing in bookshops and that I'm really curious about. I love the, the upside down sort of cover um, that it has. And a couple of people have responded saying that they thought this book was just okay. So um, it's sort of surprising seeing it so high up. But I wonder if maybe this is one of those novels that has got a lot more attention in the US than it has here in the, the UK, because I, I just haven't heard all that much about it other than uh, what people have told me in, in the comments on YouTube. Uh, so and then the other one is Sally Rooney's Normal People, which has you know, been everywhere. Everyone's been reading this. And this came out last year in the UK and was long listed for the Women's Prize this year. And Claire, um, on her YouTube channel, Claire Reads Books, she made a really great video discussing this novel and whether it can be classified as a romance novel because it follows a young couple um, throughout uh, their, their early life and their on-again, off-again relationship. So it is about that romance, but it's also about class and modern life in Ireland today. And yeah, I enjoyed it so much. I'm really glad that she's seen as one of the most exciting new literary voices. Next is a book that has appeared on 17 best books of the year lists. And that is All Of Again by Elizabeth Strout. And I've gushed on and on about how much I love both this author and this, this new iteration of uh, or uh, a continuation of the life of Olive Kitteridge, um, which he continues in a number of different stories, um, some of which 
focus on Olive and some of which focus on other uh, people in the community in her, her small town in the state of Maine. And I think her writing is just so wonderful. I, I fall into it every single time. And I have seen um, people making some critical uh points uh, about this novel and I think that that's definitely valid I mean there's there's parts of it which um, I, I had some issues with as well but but overall it's just packed with so much emotion and psychological insight that uh, that I just love it then there are four books which appear on 16 lists um, the first is Susan Choi's trust exercise which won the National Book Award for fiction this year and this is another one of those books that I think just hasn't had much uh, attention in the UK because I haven't heard all that much about it here. I sort of wonder if this is going to appear on the Women's Prize long list next year. I'll be watching out for that because it is one that I'm really interested to read but I haven't got a copy of it yet. Uh, then there is Anne Patchett's uh, The Dutch House which is another novel I absolutely loved and, and her writing is uh, the the same kind that I just sort of fall into and and I keep saying how this is a, a novel I, I find difficult to recommend because there's not a huge amount of plot but at the same time I was completely enraptured by the story of these uh, two siblings who are basically kicked out of their their house when their stepmother takes a prominent role and um, and they they have this sense of alienation and trying to find their place in the world um, since they've been sort of disposed from their their place and and uh, yeah and I think it says so much about like America today so it's about much bigger issues as well as this very intimate family story. Uh, next is uh, Carmen Maria Machado's In the Dream House, her memoir, which I'm told is a very creatively written memoir. I mean, I've read her book of short stories, um, which I, I thought was incredible and, and so inventive and really wild and funny and and uh, as well as being really moving. So I'm, I'm so excited to uh, read this. Um, this hasn't actually been published in the UK yet, um, but I have, a, I have an advanced copy of it. And so I'm hoping to read this over the Christmas break because I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, then there's Gia Tol Tolentino's uh, Trick Mirror, her um, group of essays, um, which has been massively popular and a lot of people have been discussing it. And I, I'd seen almost unanimous praise until um, I heard Laura Frey on her channel on YouTube. Um, she was talking about this a bit more critically or at least how so she feels like some of the essays don't work as well as some of the other ones. I haven't read it yet but I'm very curious to dip in and try. If you think there are any essays in this which really stand out and that I should read first even if I don't read the whole book um, then let me know in the comments below. A book which appeared on 15 lists is Jacqueline Woodson's Red at the Bone. And I feel uh, Jacqueline Woodson is one of those authors that I've been meaning to read for ages. I've never read any of her books, though I know she's um, much lauded and uh, and much beloved by many readers. And so I, I really want to try reading her book sometime. And I got a copy of this, so I'm hoping to start with this novel. A book which has appeared on 14 lists is Patrick Radden Keefe's Say Nothing. And this is a, a nonfiction book about the troubles in Northern Ireland. And this was published in the UK last year, um, but I, I, um, I, it sort of passed me by. I didn't read it and didn't see much about it, um, but it's been yeah, hugely critically acclaimed in the US when it was published there this year. And so um, it, it looks at the, the personal stories and accounts of a number of different people who were affect, affected by the troubles in Northern Ireland. So I'm very curious to, to read this. I mean, this would be a great book to read if you loved Milkman by Anna Burns. Um, this would be a great uh, nonfiction book to, to read on from that. Two books which appeared on 13 lists are uh, The Water Dancer, which um, has been getting a huge amount of attention in the, the US, um, a debut novel, but from a much respected author. I've uh, been on Oprah's book club, uh, but also uh, Amory, the, the singer, um, who also has a booktube channel. She She's doing a book club about this, and I think she just posted a video recently doing a discussion all about this novel. Uh, so I'll put a link to that um, below. I haven't watched it yet because I haven't read it yet, but I, I hope to read it really soon and then sort of join in with all the discussion that's happening around it. And then the second book is uh, non another nonfiction book, Lisa Tadeo's Three Women, which has been very 
very controversial. I mean, some people absolutely love it. And then I've seen other reactions from people who really loathed it and hated it. I haven't read it yet, but that sort of book makes me really want to read it and um, to see where I'll fall or if I'll fall in between even those big extreme opinions. Then there are a group of books which have appeared on 12 lists, um, starting with Margaret Atwood's The Testaments, the co-winner of the Booker Prize this year. And I think it just got the, the Goodreads uh, favorite fiction title of the year or, or something like that. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's a hugely enjoyable book. And I know some people have defended it as one of the best books of the year. Um, personally, I wouldn't classify it as such because I found some aspects of it sort of cliched and predictable, um, though it is a very moving story and creatively makes some very powerful statements. I mean, I love Margaret Atwood, uh, but you know, this definitely isn't my favorite book by her. Uh, then there is The Yellow House, uh, a nonfiction book uh, by Sarah M. Broom, which uh, won the National Book Award for nonfiction. And uh, I, I think this sort of centers around uh, Katrina and the events of uh, Hurricane Katrina, um, but, but also looks at the, the life of this family over, uh, over the course of a generation. And then there is Black Leopard, Red Wolf. And you know I love this novel. I mean, I made a whole video at the end of last year saying it was going to be one of the best books of 2019. And here it is on the, the best books list. Now, I know this isn't everyone's favorite novel, and I know Marlon James is, uh, is a difficult, challenging author to, to read, uh, but I just, just love this novel so much and uh, completely fell into the whole fantasy of the, the story and the wild adventure of it. Ben Lerner's The Topeka School, um, which I, I haven't read yet, uh, but I know he's massively critically acclaimed, although not by everybody. I mean, here on Booktube, uh, Mark Nash on his channel, he was quite critical of this novel. And uh, and so, you know, I'm going into it with a with a pinch of salt, but, um, but I'm really eager to see what, what I make of it. Another novel which was long-listed for the Women's Prize this year and long-listed for the Booker Prize was Lost Children Archive, um, which is a really creatively told story about a family um, making a cross-country journey, although that's a very big generalization about what the, the plot is about because uh, this novel is about many things, um, but, but a lot to do with uh, immigration in America, and I found it such a powerful novel. Uh, then there is Inland by Thea Obrecht. I think this is only her second novel. I mean, her, her first novel was hugely critically acclaimed and won the, the Women's Prize for Fiction, and I really enjoyed that, but it, I didn't completely love it. Um, but I have heard that this novel is much better, much stronger, and um, so I'm very excited to, to dive into this at one point. Then there is Women Talking by Miriam Taves, and this was one of my favorite novels of last year, because um, it came out in the UK last year, but it's only just been published in the US this year. And yeah, it's a really heartbreaking story about a dilemma of a group of women who are being abused within a small community and the decision they have to make about whether to stay or leave. And I was just talking to another reader, um, one of my Instagram friends, um, Patrick. Um, he, he had just tried reading this recently and he hated it. And I know not everybody loved this this story, but I, I, I found it so powerful. And so I'm really glad to see that she's gotten a lot of um, critical acclaim as well. Um, then there's another group of books which have appeared on 11 lists this year. And uh, the, the first in that is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Avaristo, the, the other co-winner of the Booker Prize this year. And there was a big scandal recently on uh, because on the BBC, they were making an announcement about the, the Turner Prize and how that had a group of winners um, for that this year. And, um, and so the BBC broadcaster announcer, he was commenting how, you know, there are other prizes this year, uh, like, the, um, like the Nobel Prize and the Booker Prize, which have had multiple winners. And when he was talking about the Booker Prize, he said that uh, Margaret Atwood won the prize and another author. 
and um, and so instead of naming Bernardine Evaristo, and uh, and yeah, this got this got a huge outcry on uh, social media and Twitter um, because yeah, it's really awful that that uh, that her name was just sort of erased um, like that. And you know, and I know it was just the journalist being lazy and just sort of skipping over her name rather than um, bothering to think about what what it was. But I think it does show how it is really problematic that two authors won the Booker Prize this year and and the the more uh, well-known worldwide author Margaret Atwood is the one that sticks out in people's minds and not Bernadine Evaristo um, and that's a real shame. There's also the nonfiction title Underland by Robert McFarlane um, which I just read recently and loved so much his his uh, his journey traveling to lots of underground places and caves and the bottom of glaciers and and mining um, operations and it's a book that really shifted my perspective and how I see and relate to the world and I, I just think it's incredible the way this this book gives you a whole new perspective and what an amazing cover I mean right and then there's a novel which I don't think has been published in the UK yet at least not that I've seen though um, I've seen lots of people in America talking about it and discussing it and that's Disappearing Earth by Julia Phillips because um, I think it was also listed for the National Book Award um, this year but I don't know a huge amount about this title but I'm very curious about it because so many people have been uh, discussing it and then there is a book which I'm really surprised um, to see on this list which is Zadie Smith's first book of short stories Grand Union and uh, I'm surprised to see this on, on this uh, group of lists because um, when I made a, a video um, talking about which books I should read before the end of the year and I held this up as one I, I possibly want to finish reading, um, a, a lot of people commented saying don't bother, um, it's not worth it. So so yeah, it's really surprising that the critics are so complimentary um, about this, this book. And I wonder if it's just because Zadie Smith is a, a writer of such great reputation that if they feel like they need to put it on their lists. I don't know. Uh, I mean, what do you think? I mean, I have read a couple of the stories in it and I thought they were okay, fine, but they didn't sort of spur me on to, to want to finish the collection um, anytime soon, um, though I, I would be curious to try more of them. There are two books which have appeared on 10 lists and that's uh, Chanel Miller's Know My Name, uh, which I think is a memoir. And then uh, Daisy Jones and the Six, which is a novel I've been meaning to read all year because Anna James was, was praising it highly earlier this year when we were talking about the Women's Prize. And, and I've been wanting to get to it, but just haven't read it yet. Then there are six books which have appeared on nine lists. Um, the first is a book of short stories, science fiction short stories, um, Exhalation by Ted Chain. Um, there is a memoir called How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones, um, a memoir I've been really wanting to get a copy of, but um, he hasn't been published in the UK because um, I read his debut poetry collection, which I really enjoyed. Um, so I've been wanting to read this. Then there is a translated book, which I'm so happy to see on this list, The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. And I've been talking a lot recently about how much I loved this novel. It's so powerful, really creative dystopian story um, with a really striking cover so I think this has a great chance of being on the Booker International Prize long list next year so I'm um, looking forward to that and then there's Gingerbread by Helen Oyemi um, which I just didn't get on with recently uh, I, I yeah I couldn't get into the story um, I I think she's a really interesting writer but yeah this just wasn't for me then there's Helen Phillips The Need and a group of short stories uh, by Brian Washington Lott and um, and these are all cent centered around um, the, the city of Houston and people who live in that city and I've been really wanting to get to this as well. Uh, then there is a group of books which have appeared on eight lists, um, the very first of which is Lucy Ellman's Ducks Newburyport, this big massive novel a lot of people have been talking about and which I have loved so much. I mean I talked recently in a video about how I think this is one of the top novels of the past decade. So, um, so yeah, I really rate this highly and it's definitely worth the time that it takes to read it, in my opinion. <laughs> there is uh, also Maybe You Should Talk to Someone, um, a, uh, a book called She Said, which has two authors, Jody Cantor and Megan Tui, uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist, 
and uh, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokorczyk, um, the Nobel Prize winner um, this year. And, uh, and yeah, I, I thought this was a really enjoyable novel, very creative, striking story um, with a very intriguing character at the center of it. It's sort of a mystery story, um, but also says a lot about the environment. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's really interesting. And then there is a book which I keep hearing a lot about um, called The the Collected Schizophrenias, which a number of people of uh, people here on YouTube have recommended to me and that I'd really like to, to read. So then there are a big group of, of, of other books which have appeared on seven lists and six lists and five lists. I'm just going to go through them quickly, just picking out the ones that I'm either really interested in reading or um, that I have read and would really recommend. I've been really wanting to read Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben and uh, Deaf Republic, uh, this book of poetry. I'm really happy to, to see on this list. I thought it was so striking and really creative um, and interesting way of telling the story. It's basically a narrative, even though it is a, a group of poems which could stand independently. Um, it is a narrative about a, a town that is being oppressed by this, this, um, this fascist police force. There is The Man Who Saw Everything by Deborah Levy um, with this beautiful cover and one novel that I definitely want to get to before the end of the year. Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I know that Adam over at Memento Mori was really rooting for this to win the Booker Prize and I'm so sorry that it didn't win Adam. I mean that's such a shame. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there's there's a book called Mrs. Everything, um, which I, I'm just intrigued by just because of the sound of the, the title. There's Jericho Brown's book of poetry, The Tradition, um, which I haven't read, but I'm, I'm really eager to read. Um, there is Queenie by Candice Williams. I'm really glad to see another Brit on, on, uh, on this list of books and, um, and one that I just talked about recently that was, that's been um, shortlisted for the Costa Book Awards and that I'm really hoping to read soon. There is Bowl Away by Elizabeth McCracken and I've read some of this author's short stories before and really enjoyed them. Um, so yeah, I'm very eager to read this novel as well. Um, there's the novel Shadow King, which I'm very curious to read and the Starless Sea, Aaron Morgenstern's um, new novel. Which, yeah, I'm very curious to read as well. There is Nell Zink's novel Doxology, which I've heard really mixed things about, so I'm not really sure of whether I should give it a try or not. I'm, I've never read Nell Zink before and I've always wanted to, so I don't know if this would be the novel to start with. I'm really happy to see on, on top of the list of, of uh, books that have appeared on five lists is Kevin Barry's novel Night Boat to Tangier, um, which was long listed for the Booker Prize and I found so hugely enjoyable. I'm really glad that um, this author is getting a lot more international recognition because I've um, read him and enjoyed him for a number of years and, and, uh, and I think he's really striking, interesting author. I'm also really happy to see Yi Yun Lee's novel Where Reasons End uh, on on this list because um, yeah it's very striking emotional novel about a conversation between a mother and her son who is deceased. I'm also very glad to see Ghost Wall by, by Sarah Moss on this list which was published last year in the UK but has only just come out in the, the US this year and uh, yeah and another book which I think is is definitely one of my top books of the past decade that I talked about in a video recently because um, it's so powerful. There's Sandra Newman's novel The Heavens, um, another novel which is so creatively done and really really interesting um, to read. Uh, another novel that I, I think we'll most likely see on the Women's Prize um, list next year. Um, then there is Laura Prescott's uh, The Secrets We Kept, which is a novel I've been really wanting to get to. I'm so intrigued um, by this book. So um, yeah, hoping to read this soon. And then there is an environmental book of nonfiction called The Uninhabitable Earth by David Wallace Wells um, that I've been really meaning to, to read as well because um, I keep hearing really great things uh, about it and, and I'd like to read more nonfiction. Um, so, so those are all the books I'm going to talk about. Sorry, I was going through them at a pace at the end because um, here in the UK, it gets dark so early at this time of year. So um, the sun has just been dropping away 
why I've been making this video over this short amount of time making this video. Um, so, um, but I'll put a link down below to the full list so you can have a look through. I mean, out of all these books, um, I've only read, there's 111 listed and I've only read 17 of them. Um, so I've, I've quite a lot more to go. But I was glad to see some of my favorites of the year have um, been getting such great critical acclaim um, amongst a wide group of publications. Uh, so uh, so let me know what, what you think of these lists, um, which you're most interested in reading, um, which you would highly recommend if, if you've read any of them. And uh, let's have a chat in the comments below. But thank you for watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.